Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, I am going to talk to you about youth leadership and selfless service, leading with a selfless heart. Did you know that you were created to lead? We're going to learn about empowering youth service through strategies of success. And my name is Dr. Jarmie Sherrod, and I am president and CEO of Sherrod's Independent Mentoring Program Incorporated and She Will Legacy. Let's get started. My leadership and service snapshot goes back from 20 years. I just celebrated this today as far as August is concerned. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about all the places that I've impacted and the students that I've impacted, whether it be through community service, character education, leadership, violence prevention, you name it, I have done it. Today's goal, we're going to empower you to make sure that you lead with a selfless heart, educate you on how to do it with consistency for impact, and then show you how to lead with leadership so that you're not alone in this process as well. Do you know that no good deed goes unknown? And then I am going to empower you with an action plan for service. But the first step to any action plan is you have to know where you are presently at and where you're gonna go into the future. And so once you've known, and there's an old saying that when you know where you come from, you will know where you are going later on in life. So as we get through, we're gonna look through these three areas and I want you to take notes so that you can be a future leader of tomorrow. And once you've done that, you have to open your mind and your heart to make sure that you are a selfless leader. Three questions that I always ask leaders, no matter where we serve at, is number one, do you have the time to serve? Time is an important essence of any leadership, whether you're serving a small community or a big organization. The next thing you want to do is, do you have the time to lead? A lot of leaders are busy doing multiple things, working multiple jobs, but I want to know, do you have that investment? Do you have the leadership qualities that it takes? Are you enhancing your leadership qualities, maybe through professional development, maybe YouTube videos, conferences, or working with somebody side by side? And my biggest one of all is, do you have the heart to lead? Do you have that selfless heart that teaches you to give back, not to be selfish, because there is a difference between selfish and selflessness. And what I want to empower you, and you're going to learn about me, is how to have a selfless heart. That means thinking about others, putting other people's ideas, um, passions, and visions at the forefront so that you can work together. Now, I'm going to lead you through some of the eight steps that we're going to talk about today, and I call them the Sherrod Leadership Success Manual. And the first step is accepting that you can do it. I want you to know that leadership is not, nothing that happens overnight. I started in 2002, and I started with one student. His name was Aaron Moore, and now he's a police officer in Tennessee, and he's been in my program for the longest. I asked him a couple of years ago, I said, hey, do you still need me? And he said that he does. I often, when I mentor students now, the first thing that I ask them is and tell them is that I'm going to be here for you as long as you need me in your life. That is goes back to do you have the time to serve and lead? When I started with that one student, I mentor students by visiting them in their homes. I actually did some in-home tutoring, mentoring, and academic advising. And then later on, I began to find a storefront. And then I started with a couple of people and later hired some people to help me out. And then we started impacting organizing events. Now you go later to 2023 and I am mentoring thousands of students around the world. I serve students in programs in Haiti, South Africa, Germany, and this summer we're doing Puerto Rico, and then I've added more countries on each year. My leading and serving is in my legacy book. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life, and I wake up every day with this big old smile on my face, ready to lead and serve. At my 20th year anniversary this past summer, 
I sat down and I said, what do I want to do that's going to make me um, a person that I can continually give back to communities and also make me proud and make my family proud as well. And the number one thing I wanted to do was to build a 20 year service of selfless service activities and leaderships for countries in need. And so I plan on traveling the world and here's today, I'm speaking to students all across the world to make sure that that happens. So I want you to remember that you have the power to accept anything that you can do and you're gonna remember these three steps at the bottom. Number one, accept that you have your power and that you're capable of doing anything. Two, assess your strengths. We are going to look at things that you're very good at, things that you need to have or make improvements on, and then you're going to act now. Do not put off what you can do today or tomorrow. You can do it right now. Let's go to number two. The next thing I want you to do is believe that the world needs you. There are so many things going on around the world. We have violence. We have all type of problems, even students dealing with self-esteem. Do you know that you're capable of doing some of those great things to empower them to lead and believe in their self? And you can do it one step at a time. You are a masterpiece. You were created to do awesome things. Your love can be shared with the world. And I know some of you may be sitting here and you may be saying, Dr. Sherrod, I don't think that I have it in me to do it. I learned something very smart once and someone told me, if you're going to do it, you better do it afraid. Put your biggest boots on of empowerment and get to walking to your next level of destiny. Let's go to number three. This is something that's so important, which is convincing others that leadership and service is a form of democracy. There is nothing that I do not do in my leadership pro program that does not put students first, that, that gives them a voice and let them know that their voice matters. You must make sure that that still voice, even the smallest voice at the bottom of your tummy is one of those voices that you lead the most. And here are some advantages of democracy. Number one, you have deeper relationships between building trust and respect. It also encourages voices and their opinions to be heard, whether it's sharing ideas, coming up with creative problems and solutions. And I always tell students, if you're having any type of conflict, create a conflict resolution team inside your organization. My youth are leading in that area. And the reason why is because I want them to be able to be critical thinkers and solve those problems as well. Over the time, you're going to learn that you're going to be able to work independently, Create, I create boards and I call them little adults, but I create presidents, vice presidents, secretaries, treasurers. We also follow Robert Rules of Orders. We want to make sure that whatever we do that is in decency and in order. Now, there are some limitations to democracy, and that means things that when you look at them, they have to be right. And we want to make sure that we're on that pathway. So, some things that you, what can happen is miscommunication. You can also have people not have their feelings or thoughts heard. And so the best thing that you can do is you can survey people. I'm a fan of sending out surveys. I send out feedback every time we do a workshop because I want to know what people think about what we did that day, how it impacted. But most of all, how can I improve for the very next time that I do a workshop? And that's what we call appreciative and constructive feedbacks. Let's head over to number four. Decide your course of action. Now there are green flags, flags and there are red flags right there. When you do this, I want you to look at these green flags first. Number one, I practice crawl before you walk. Do not rush the process of leadership and service. You wanna make sure that you have some support. So I love mentees, mentors. I love when students go study up under organizations, CEOs, business leaders, and ask them, how did you do this? How, what mistakes did you make? How can I make sure that I'm on the right track? Do you mind mentoring me? Do you mind pouring into me? If you ask people those questions, I'm pretty sure that they will smile and take you up under their wings to help. Next thing, we talked about handling crisis. Make sure that you do it right away. Do not wait. You don't want a mouse to turn into an elephant. That means a big problem to turn into a gigantic problem. 
Make sure that you have effective communication between your team and then celebrate everything positive. I wake up happy every day and I'm positive because I'm doing something that I love. I would not trade this for anything in the world. Red flags that you want to make sure that you are looking at is number one, the micromanagement of team leaders. I believe if you give a person a job and you entrust that they can do that job, then you ought to make sure that they do that job well. And in doing that job well, that means that you cannot go through this process of micromanaging them. I've seen some teams work in situations where they will give a person a task and then they will follow behind them little by little. We wanna make sure that you don't do that. Trust that they can do it, respect the boundaries that they have set, and I think you will be fine. Another thing that people often do is they try to overspend. Things that I do in my impact are three. I want to make sure that no everybody has access and nobody is left behind. And so in doing that, I make sure that I do fundraisers or I go to different organizations or corporate organizations and ask them and tell them my vision and ask them for support. I say, hey, this is something that I want to do in this community. I know that it's going to benefit not only your corporation, but it's going to benefit the lives that are right here in our community and we need to push them forward. And so we'll set those type of budgeting, um, budgeting things for them. Another thing I do is I'll apply for grants, even if there's the smallest amount of grants. You can go to department stores. They have grants available as well, too. Or you can just pull up a sponsorship letter and say, hey, this is what I want to do. And I'm going to make sure that I give 100% back to this organization of what you're giving me to impact the kids in need. Make sure that you're not mistreating anything. Oftentimes, people leave organizations and they also leave communities, organizations, too, when they have the focus of they didn't feel like that they were treated well. And that's one thing that we do not want to do in leadership. We want to make sure that people are positive, that they are coming to a place, even if they're volunteering, that they're coming to a place that's love, out of respect. And, and we want to make sure that it's positive and that all the time things are not going to be sunshine and rain and there's going to be a little rain here and there, but you're going to make sure that your team has the best team. I lead with pom-poms. That's my number one thing that I do. I tell people I am your biggest cheerleader. And so they see my pom-poms in action. Get your favorite thing that you would love to do and celebrate them as well too. Another red flag is confusion and conflict. We want to make sure that we stay away from those. And the best solution to confusion and conflict is effective communication. Whether you put it in writing, whether you tell them on the, on the phone, make sure that you are doing effective communication during your process. Ignoring the needs of others is another red flag. And I told you before that you can do this by surveying people or asking them frequently about feedback as well as how that you can improve um, later on in life. Last thing on here is lack of integrity. I tell my kids all the time, and I'm talking about my personal kids, my son and my daughter, one rule in our household from the beginning of birth into now is integrity. I always tell them I am more concerned with what you do when I am not in your face than what you do when I am in your face. That means when my back is turned, when I'm away from the situation, you're still leading with integrity. That means following the rules, that you're being honest as well too. These are all part of service and leadership. Let's go over to number five. And the next is empower. When we talk about empower, I'm gonna tell you a couple of things that I do to empower you. Number one, you'll see at the top is Chicago Youth Centers. I love empowering Chicago Youth Centers. I'm on their board because we make sure that kids all around Chicago are definitely and well taken care of. The next you'll see is American Red Cross. And what I love is bringing youth organizations together from five different cities in the state of Illinois to serve. And what we do is we serve on each theme. And this year's theme is helping the environment. Up to the right, we have the Governor's Cup. This is one of the things I'm most proud of. And in that Governor's Cup, 
that is helping youth leaders lead in the state of Illinois. We were honored with this Governor's Cup simply because we help student lead, lead in the state of Illinois and we made sure that they were then serving students all over. And so we're the only youth team in the state of Illinois out of 38 years of history to win this Governor's Cup. So I'm super proud about that. I also serve for Girls Inc. And at the bottom, you'll see that. And we serve girls all around Chicago. Next, we're gonna forward forward with new ideas. Things that I often want to do is I wanna tell students to plan often whenever you're doing a new idea and you're serving. Host weekly meetings if you can with your team. Think about a thought journal. This is my thought journal right here. And I create one because I'm an avid daydreamer and I want to make sure that whatever we do, that I have those thoughts down as well. Read, read, read. Make sure that you know what's going on in your local news, local organization so that you can know how to impact. And then archive any of those ideas that you have, because oftentimes we lose information because we don't archive and we don't save it and pass it down to the next person. When you make sure that you lead, you're leading with integrity, make sure that you're representing on social media. That matters. I tell students all the time, what you put out in the world, people will see, and once it's out, you cannot take it back. So make sure that you're positive, make sure you have a great plan as well too, and make sure that there's no bullying, that you work with trusted adults, and that you're violence free with any type of lifestyles that you do when you're serving and leading. And the next is gratitude goes a long way. How often do you thank people? I know that my biggest thing is I am the queen of sweet treats and I make sure that I have sweet treats every time I have an organization to thank people for giving back. You can also do it with a thank you card. You can send an email or you can give smiles all over the internet to let people know that you appreciate them for serving. Happiness is a byproduct of giving back and everything you do, whether like you're like me, giving to veterans, doing Mrs. or Mr. Claus for students in different schools, writing cards, serving in different organizations by providing care packages. Whatever you do, make sure that you have a smile and that you're happy with it. My legacy is a part of me. These are some of the things that I know about me because I assess my, myself and I assess my leaders and the student leaders that we serve. Once you look at any of these assessments, Take a moment and do them. They're all free. You have the opportunity to build and grow. One thing I like about assessments is they help you categorize and put students on different teams so that you know and you can balance out the people that are working with you as well too. Find some reliable realists. Look at some people that um, are number ones or number twos and bridge those people together. The next thing you want to do is teach and coach. Don't let anything stop you from sharing your legacy. You can mentor and then you can also have mentees. Pass that torch to other people. Study leadership service models. Adapt something that makes you special. Earn credentials, certificates that's going to help you out. Be a change agent and be decisive. Make sure that you have a roadmap to success. And in that roadmap to success, you're sharing it with other organization leaders as well. And then evaluate and reflect. These are some examples that you can use. You can get them off of Google. You can create your own feedback session to figure out how you are doing and what you are doing well as well too. Make sure that you do that. And don't forget at the very end of every time you do an organization, leadership, service, opportunity, celebrate with your team. You can do it by high fives, hugs, or whatever makes you happy. And at the very end, as I close, I want to remind you, I don't preach, I live what I teach. These are some of the great things that make me who I am. These are some of the great things that have me leading and serving all over the world. And I look forward to you the next time I see your organization or your, your conference, I see you leading in some of these same things. If you have any questions or concerns, here's information about me where you can contact me and I will be happy as well as my team to give you any advice and serve you well. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Sherrod and have a great day.